I want kids to know that they are expected to achieve. They are expected to care about each other. They are expected to expand their minds. They are expected to invest energy in their lives and in their destinies. And I believe that. stands for communication, the A stands for uh, awareness, the R stands for responsibility, and the E stands for education. The students can just say what they'd like to say, very relaxed, and uh, just to let them know that we care about them and we want to hear what they have to say. That's one of the tools. Also in this situation, there are some people who give, and there are some people who take. And then there are some people also who don't give other people an opportunity to give. Okay, for example, driving along the highway, you come to a toll booth, right? Everybody in the car goes. Okay, I got, I got, I got it. And the driver says, no, 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 I have it out already. I'll take care of it. Now that driver is not giving those people an opportunity to give. You have to do that for people sometimes. They want to accept it. What is Look it? at me, <laughs> Rosa, what is uh, care? Why are you in care? How did you get in care? Well, my problem was attendance. And uh, this year, I started to come to school more. And I've done a lot better in my classes. And uh, care for me is somewhere where I can go and talk and unwind. and. To me, care is a place where you can go to express yourself when there isn't anybody else to turn to, and a place where you can be part of a family, and where everybody tries to understand you, when you try to understand everybody else. A place where you can feel part of something if you're not part of anything else. Like, if you get in trouble in school or something, there'll always be somebody there that you can turn to that, that'll understand you and they'll try their hardest to understand you and they won't turn their back. John said something very important when he mentioned family because we like to think of ourselves as a family. And in a family, you share the good and the bad. You share the disappointments and the successes and that's what we do in the class.
I have a little boy, the same my daughter, and his name is Jonathan Lopez, and he's sick now, so he's not here. And I don't know the He came here, who was it? This will be three years he's been here. I came here in the ninth grade, he was two months old. He loves it here. Sometimes I come here and he doesn't want to go home with me. He runs away from me because he has so he has so much fun here, and they teach him a lot here. Teach him how to feed himself. The things that we would be doing if we stayed out of school. The stuff we would be teaching them, they're here to teach them while we go to class, and it's a big help. They also teach them how to um. Like they teach them their alphabets and they have know how to count. Yeah. Cause my daughter now she says her ABCs to a certain letter and she counts to ten and she's going on two years old and she's been doing this since she, like she was a year and a half. And they they really like they advanced them here. Yeah. They show them blocks and their colors. It's a real big help. It's a, because if I if I wasn't if the life program wasn't here and I was to stay home with her, I don't think she would know all that she knows right now. Cause she has the environment of kids and the learning and stuff, and it's real good here. Okay. Um, from all your experiences, what would you tell to young teenage girls? Go ahead. <laughs> well, maybe Jennifer could answer that. She did an article. They did an interview on her. So <laughs> Thanks. Well, it's not all roses having a kid at such a young age. Right away, girls, when they get pregnant, they'll be like, oh, I'm going to have a baby. They think it's going to be like a little doll. I know I used to think that when I first got pregnant. But it's nice. There are, you have your fun times, but it's a lot of responsibility, a lot of work. You don't have your freedom as much as you used to. You, if you want to go somewhere, you can't just get up, get dressed, and leave. You have to make plans ahead of time mm -hmm. and find a babysitter. and. Yeah. Well, you know that babysitter can get sick and then your plans are spoiled and you can't complain about it because you had the yeah. choice to have your child. So you got to take the responsibility that comes with it. So just be sure you're ready for the responsibility. Think twice about making a decision like that. Right. <laughs> when you're in high school and have a baby, you have to make sure you try your best to, to achieve what you want to because you have to make a better place for your child. You have to um, make sure that you get what you want, graduate from high school, so that you can go and get a job or go to college, so that you can have a nice place for your child to live, live in. Um, it's been hard because, I mean, no, the, that's the what body, I came here for. for those of us that are in the yearbook class, we know that it's hard because yeah. everything that ever had to be done, we yeah. the ones who had to start it. It wasn't yeah. already here. The newspaper, we already had a newspaper. And I mean, in other schools, they already had a newspaper. We did. Mm -hmm. It was hard for us because we had to be the starters, the initiators. Mm -hmm. I mean, you never think about what goes on and, and how you get something started. You go to another school, they already have a yearbook. That's yeah. taken for granted. All these things, programming, deans, teachers, everything so that gets sports along. Teams. Exactly. Sports team, trips, coasts, mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. student government. Everything was already there in other schools. But here, it's like we had to start it. And like, if you think about it, that's good because Whatever the school is going to be, we know it's because of us that <laughs> we made it that way. True. You know? We want the newspaper to be around, the yearbook to be around. We're the ones who have to gotta, talk to we us. We got to take the initiative to get well, like And it's hard. It I want students to lead themselves. If I had to take an ultimate goal, when students lead themselves, when students take action, are responsible for their actions, and those actions take into consideration the well-being and welfare of the school community, then we have created a marvel. Then we have something very special. Yes, we are a high-tech school, and I think maybe, I think we really have the finest computer program in the city of New York. Uh, and certainly, once we get our video studio constructed, I think we're really going to excel there as well. Um, but we're also, you know, I, I say we're high tech, high touch. And high touch because if we can't create 
human beings, students who are human beings who care about each other, then we have failed in our mission. And one of the reasons we kept the school small was so that as many staff members and as many students really knew each other's name. And then when you went down the hall, you could say, hi, Tracy, you know, hi, Wendy, hi, because most of the teachers let us and, do and that. And it was like hardly any, you see, it was like a lot of falling, like a lot of fights in school. Like it was hardly any of that. Remember that time, like with the thing with Fort Hamilton this year? We had so many conferences with Fort Hamilton. And it's like all the black and white guys, Bill and them, came out when Ray was having that fight and jumped in. You know, it was like a big family. It was like nobody said yeah. he's like, he's like, you know, let the white guys fight, let the black guys. It's like, hey, you don't even mess with Ray, you know, they all, you know. Yeah. And it was like <laughs> one family. Beverly Hills 90210 is brought to you by Hear No Evil, starring Marley Matlin and B.B. Sweeney. What you can't hear could kill you. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. Silence. It can be beautiful. But when you can't hear the clues... Mickey gave you something, didn't he? The warnings. Mickey's dead. You want to be next? The danger right behind you. Silence can be deadly. Starring Academy Award winner Marley Matlin and D.B. Sweeney. Rated R. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. There's a hunger inside you. If you've worked up a hunger and all you want is peanut butter, then it's going to take a new Snickers peanut butter bar to satisfy you. 
smooth peanut butter, the crunching of fresh roasted peanuts, delicious caramel, and thick milk chocolate. So if it's peanut butter satisfaction you're after, try the great new taste of new Snickers peanut butter bar. There's a hunger inside you. It's a stroke of genius. Discover vibrance and revitalize your hair. Vibrant shampoos and conditioners with keratin proteins revitalize each strand with healthier shine, color, and fullness. Revitalize your hair with vibrance. Introducing a whole new way to enjoy chicken. KFC Spicy Chicken Bites. Just $1.99 for a single serving. Get them while they last only at KFC. Lake Edna may never be the same. We do chicken! Sunday, Wanda meets her match. Baby, you smell good. What you wearing? Speedsticks? And things get ugly. Why don't you go be a victim of a drive-by? <laughs> on In Living Color. Then, how does Joey turn a little accident? I sure hope that boy's got on clean underwear. Into a big payoff? $10,000. And they say we're in a recession. Rock live. And when Al gets sued, he hires the best lawyer his money can buy. Order in the court. I'll have a cheeseburger. It's Kelly Bundy for the defense on an all-new Married with Children after In Living Color and Rock Live Sunday. Oh, by the way, the real estate people are coming today, so make your beds, okay?